every Steven Universe fan likely has a different point in the series where they would say it became truly great. Some would say it's a point towards the end of the first season, such as Lion 3, Rose's Scabbard, or even Jailbreak, while others will go earlier, pointing to great scenes in episodes like Giant Woman, Lars and the Cool Kids, or Rose's Room. And while I do love many of the episodes in Season 1A, I think the first moment of true greatness in the show comes at the tail end of that first chunk of episodes in the mid-season finale, Mirror Gem, and Ocean Gem, and that's what we're talking about today. In this video, we're going to go through the first two-parter of the franchise and discuss how the introduction of Lapis Lazuli shook up the foundation of Steven Universe in a way that allowed it to become the truly fantastic show it was destined to be. If you know what I mean. The beginning of this episode utilizes the 24 outings before it to lure the audience into somewhat of a false sense of security, as we open to a phone call where Connie both explains her absence from the first half of this two-parter, while also giving a pretty vague explanation of what school is to Steven, something that does definitely hit quite a bit differently after episodes like Mr. Universe, but at this point in the show, it's pretty easy to just laugh at the fact that Steven doesn't know what a school is. But besides the beginning of this episode luring the audience into believing they're watching another comedy-centric episode of the series, it also works to reinforce the idea of Steven's odd upbringing in comparison to the other kids his age, as his alien caretakers don't even know what school is either, and Greg certainly wouldn't find it necessary to explain it to his son. Anyway, a few gags later, including this line, which feels shockingly self-aware for the show nine years later, why do I never ask follow-up questions? And Pearl summons the mirror that will take most of the focus for the rest of the episode. Which, while it is broken, does end up teaching Steven more about gem culture than Pearl ever could have imagined. And while it is somewhat uncharacteristic for her to give up on teaching an enthusiastic Steven just because the mirror isn't cooperating, the gag with her spending the rest of the episode in the background trying to make everything symmetrical is pretty great, and it sets Steven off into beach City for some mirror shenanigans. Steven hanging out with Lars and Sadie is mostly meant to just give the mirror some sound clips to work with later, as well as setting up a great gag at the end of the next episode, but I do appreciate they still include a little bit of foreshadowing in Steven's conversation with the Big Donut employees, as while Lars talks about summer vacation bringing out of city babes into town, Steven ends up being the one with a girl from significantly out of town by the end of the episode. Moving on. Once Steven moonwalks out of that awkward conversation, the first and arguably smallest twist of the episode kicks in, as the mirror begins to use sound clips from the episode to communicate with Steven, first saving him from the tires of Mayor Dewey's campaign van. And while this first line from the mirror introduces the really cleverly done gimmick of the episode, I think what truly emphasizes the eeriness of it, which doesn't even phase Steven, is its second line in response to his question. Oh, what's it like being a mirror? You work! While the eeriness does disappear for a bit, as the mirror assists Steven with fart jokes in a scene that's a bit too clever to dislike, the episode completely switches moods as the sun goes down, giving us a completely different palette and atmosphere for the second half. The use of music throughout this entire episode is really spectacular, but I think it's perhaps at its best during the conversation between Steven and the mirror on the beach before he goes back to his house, as while the show allows the scene to be entirely music free for the first half or so, it begins to eerily and slowly creep in as the mirror begs Steven to not tell the rest of the gems about it. It's just a really great use of sound in a show that utilizes it better than almost any other. Moving on, while I was watching this episode over and over and over again for this video, something that really caught me by surprise is how much of the episode is taken up by the final scene. While the episode somewhat seems like it can be split nicely into three somewhat even parts, as Steven gets the mirror, hangs out with the mirror, and is eventually confronted by the gems about the mirror, the last of those three takes up almost the entire second half of the episode, as we get nearly six minutes of a scene without any cuts in it. 
While this observation doesn't seem that important, what it does for the episode is allow the complete tone shift once the gems hear of the mere sentience to permeate throughout a large chunk of the episode. And the lack of any cuts or time skips allows the viewer to feel the same tension as Steven throughout these moments. Steven's optimism about having a new friend in the form of the mirror is immediately dashed by the horror of the other three gems who are terrified by what this could possibly mean. As a viewer, it would make sense to think in this moment that the gems are probably right, as the formula of the show dictates that this gem in the mirror will end up being some kind of monster that the gems are going to end up poofing and bubbling just like usual. But instead, the scene continues to get darker and more ominous, as Garnet essentially threatens Steven while trying to get the mirror from him, as the camera moves behind him to create the effect of Garnet grabbing onto the viewer. The tension of this scene is built so well, as the mirror repeats no over and over and over again, essentially forcing Steven to try and protect it, as he inadvertently knocks Garnet's hand and creates this chilling moment. While this isn't the first time that we've seen that Garnet has three eyes, this is certainly the first time that we've seen this fact used to strike fear in the heart of Steven. As without the visor, the alienness of the gems is emphasized to further draw a distinction between the limited amount that Steven knows about the gems and their extensive history that's been hinted at throughout the first 25 episodes. Once Steven runs in fear from the people that essentially raised him, he finds himself alone on the beach with the mirror, who first hints at being far from home before showing Steven removing the gem from the mirror as it finally conjures an image of its own instead of just reflecting, which inevitably leads Steven to become the mirror instead, as he recreates what he just saw. This scene is just so remarkably well done even nine years and so many episodes of the show later, as the water creeping up to surround Steven as the music gets louder and louder and louder creates this unbelievably tense moment where the viewer is forced to imagine the horrors that are about to pop out of this gem. Only for those expectations to be crushed, as the music switches entirely and out pumps Lapis Lazuli, perhaps the most humanoid creature in the show so far, as she simply thanks Steven for freeing her. This shot is just absolutely stellar from start to finish, as everything from this scene from Lapis first collapsing on the beach to Steven literally seeing himself in her through the reflection of her empty eyes is just burnt into my mind. Despite there being only about a minute left in this first half of the episode after Lapis is freed, pretty much every line from her is somewhat groundbreaking for the show, the first of which being the juxtaposition of Steven being both kind and a member of the Crystal Gems, as Steven is exposed to something other than the idea of his group basically being a charity for the first time in the series, something that is fittingly followed by the arrival of said group who call for Steven and pretend to attack his new friend. Lapis's response to the gems is another really interesting part of her portrayal in this episode, as while she does somewhat attack them, it's very difficult to describe anything she does in this episode as villainous, as she simply just tries to give herself time to talk to Steven, hardly hurting the crystal gems as she only attacks them to the point of knocking them away. And this is where the final twist of the episode truly kicks in, as Lapis tries to get Steven to come home, as while it was somewhat indicated in the past, Steven finally learns that the gems aren't from Earth at the same time that he's learning that there's more than three. When Steven fails to accept Lapis's offer, she doesn't try to kidnap him or force him to go, as she simply just leaves. The ending to this episode is genuinely one of the most impressive scenes that Steven Universe has ever put together, as it shakes both Steven's and the audience's understanding of how their world works, a feeling that's continued into Ocean Gem. You explain this immediately! It was Lapis Lazuli. Jim kicks off with a few gags before the full consequences of Steven's actions become apparent, 
as Greg pops in to inform the gang that Steven's summer funtime buddy has stolen the ocean. This plot point gets a bit more wild and consequential the more you think about it, as it's somewhat implied by a few shots in this episode that Lapis took the entire ocean and not just the water surrounding Beach City, which I have to think isn't what the show is going for, as it somewhat breaks the logic of the show and paints Lapis as pretty infinitely powerful, but to an extent, that last point is somewhat purposeful, but I'll get back to that in a second. This episode is obviously the mid-season finale, and was even intended to be an adequate ending if this series was never picked up for more episodes, and thus, this one has an aura of grandness to it. With the entire cast showing up, and the show giving us some nice panning shots to really drive this in. And while this does somewhat prevent us from getting as many slower, more intimate moments like a good chunk of Mirror Gem, the sense of grandness as our entire gang chases down the most powerful entity of the first 26 episodes is greatly appreciated. Obviously, the idea of the gems not being morally perfect permeate into this episode, with this statement from Pearl indicating just that. How could I have known the gem contained in that mirror would be so powerful? The show's obvious eventual redemption of the gang after Lapis rightfully called them out for trapping her begs for this sentence to end with would be like us or would be uncorrupted, but it's instead implied that Pearl was fully aware that Lapis was conscious and human-like, but just thought that she was a weaker gem. More on that later, but first though, Steven decides that it's his responsibility to try and get the ocean back, and the entire gang joins him for his ironically unnautical adventure. The montage of the crew traveling across the sudden desert has some of the most beautiful beautiful backgrounds and shots of the series, and after kicking things off with the now pretty iconic Garnet rollout, the rest of the montage uses the track Night Drive, which copyright is hopefully letting me play right now and is one of my favorite instrumentals in the series. The whole scene is just filled with moments that you could screenshot and make your desktop background, as it's suddenly ended by confirmation of a pretty commonly accepted fan theory, as Pearl confirms that not not only is Lapis a fellow gem, but so are all the monsters, as they've just been corrupted. While this quote-unquote theory that was confirmed wasn't exactly earth-shattering for the audience, it does kind of officially add some murkiness to everything that the gems have been doing throughout the first 25 episodes, a line of thought that ends once we reach the tower. What follows a short exchange between Lapis and Steven is one of the best fights of the entire series series and an absolute fantastic sequence. It's got pretty much everything going for it, as we have a ridiculously great score, beautiful backgrounds, some really impressive choreography, and what really makes this fight great is that it features the Crystal Gems, who we've seen through Steven's eyes as superheroes get absolutely thumped in a 4v1 versus Lapis. It's pretty shocking how poorly things go for our heroes at this point, as Greg's leg and van get busted up as Steven faces some real consequences for the first time in the series. In general, outside of the historically fantastic concept of heroes having to fight copies of themselves, this fight is just over the top and how great it is, culminating with Steven ending it by using his shield for the first time, a reminder of the protective nature of his abilities and of his gem half, as, especially in the first season, it can somewhat be easy to forget that Steven is a gem, just like Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, Lapis, and all the monsters they've poofed and bubbled. And after Lapis decides to not drown Steven, we get one of the most beautifully animated scenes of the last 10 years. You didn't need me to tell you or even show you this footage for you to remember how stunning the scene from atop Lapis's tower truly is. The episode knows this too, leaving shots to hang on specific angles that truly highlight the beauty of this area. 
I know I made a comment about the desktop background type of animation earlier in the episode, but I'm pretty sure that every Steven Universe fan has had one of these shots on their desktop at some point. Anyway, there's more about these scenes to talk about besides the fantastic visuals and sound design, as we get a pretty short conversation between Steven and Lapis, as he begs her to come together with her fellow gems, something that Lapis, fresh out of thousands of years as a prisoner of war, isn't exactly ready to do. Eventually, conversation shifts to her desire to return home being prevented by her cracked gem, something that Steven is possibly the only being capable of, or at least willing to, fix. As Lapis transforms into an even friendlier and less villainous form, saying a total of seven words before leaving Steven to free fall with an ocean's worth of water back to Earth. Something that Connie luckily saves him from as he gets the gang back to an appreciative beach city, with Sadie pushing Lars into the water in the fulfillment of their gag from earlier. And amid the town wide celebration of Steven and Connie's heroism, typical of a mid season finale, Gar Anna and Pearl have a quick conversation about the ramifications of this ultra-powerful gem with knowledge of the crystal gems making her way to homeworld, which ominously ends with Garnet, who everybody in the series looks to for leadership and stability, essentially telling her that it's a waiting game. With Steven ending the episode by curiously gazing into the sky and thinking about his beach summer fun buddy. See you, Lapis. Wherever you are. The list of things that change with Steven Universe as a result of these two episodes is immense, but all of it can mostly be categorized as one thing, scope. After this episode, everything about the show became bigger. The world, the stakes, the amount of emotional depth they were willing to dive into, and the amount that each character is examined from a morality standpoint. And it's this development that allowed the series to make the jump into telling the more mature and immensely satisfying stories that fill the next few seasons of the show. While it is somewhat difficult to rewatch this episode after seeing the entire series, and trying to capture what feeling it would bring to a new viewer, even after knowing every twist and turn of this episode, and even after knowing that dozens of gems would be introduced into the show after Lapis's big reveal, I was still able to see the true spectacle of these two episodes. While they tell one joint story, Mirror Gem and Ocean Gem are very, very different, with the former being this eerie and dark questioning of everything we know about the gems, and the latter being this grand adventure that explores that idea from a more optimistic lens. Both episodes come together to create this really terrific package that brings the first batch of episodes to a close while providing a roadmap for the rest of the series to reach greatness. And before I bring this video to a close, I think we need to spend a little bit of time talking about Lapis, a character that people definitely have some opinions on, but even people who think that Lapis wasn't handled especially well towards the end of the series can't argue that her introduction in this episode was anything besides undeniably fantastic. No other gem could have filled the role as the first non-crystal gem in the series this well, as Lapis both has the humanistic friendly design to make Steven question his view on the world, while also being distinctly mysterious and tragic. And even if her appearances towards the tail end of the show are somewhat mixed in my opinion, partially due to this episode establishing her character on the idea of her mysteriousness, and then spending the rest of the series series making her less mysterious, I'll never forget the feeling of watching her first reform on the beach. This feeling, along with the rest of the beautifully written, animated, and scored two-parter, is why, in a series with a multitude of terrific episodes, I believe that Mirror Gem and Ocean Gem is when Steven Universe became truly great. Anyway, that's about it for me. If you want to hear me talk more about animation, you can probably find my Twitter somewhere in the description, but either way, this has been Ample Samuel, and the next time I talk about Steven Universe on this channel, it will hopefully be a significantly too long video about the movie. A bunch of Fiona and Cake analysis before then though. Thanks for watching.